Hey guys, so today we're gonna dive into the low back. Um, I have had a couple people reach out to me this week, two that live in my neighborhood, um, a couple during my live classes as well, reach out to me about back pain. I think because the summer's over, kids are back at school, people are going back to work, we're refocusing on those areas of our life, we're kind of neglecting our body a little bit. So um, today I want to kind of show you some ideas, hey Alice, um, some ideas on what you can do if you're experiencing back pain um, or if you just want to build strength or find length within your back. If you're experiencing like extreme back pain, like I know some of you are, um, personal one-on-one -on -one privates are going to propel your practice to the next level. Um, it's and it's not just your practice it will get you out of pain faster um, if you're dealing with an extreme issue so if that is the case then yeah um, keep an eye out for those <laughs> private sessions because those will be huge for you um, so yeah this is for like moderate discomfort um, and just little ideas for what you can do throughout your day um, so if you feel any compression in the low back there are two things I want you to kind of keep an eye on. Um, the low back is very helpful. It wants to help a lot. And what happens is it takes over all kinds of movements that it doesn't need to be the driver for. Like it can help, but when it becomes the driver, the main force in those moves, you will feel it immediately in your back. Um, it's overstraining, it's overtired, it's overworked. So. Yeah, two things you can do in your practice or even throughout the day is engage the glutes and fill the ribs. So those two areas above and below the hips and low back will really support you. Hey Nick, how's it going? Um, those two areas will really support and find like more of this inner steel armor. Um, it's this elastic armor of fascia that connects all the way up the body so that we can kind of relax and get out of pain with the low back, yeah? So I'm gonna have you, um, I think big, uh, all four is is becoming my favorite pose um, as a teacher and as a student. It's just mind blowing what you can kind of feel and then once you can feel it in all fours, you can take that into every other pose, every other movement within your life. So make your way to your mat if you're gonna join me today. Um, knees are gonna come down about under the hips. Top of the foot pulls forward as the heels squeeze in. The knees are gonna press wide to lift the hips upward. Take the fingertips and press them down. Squeeze the heel of the hand in towards each other. As the elbows push wide, you can almost push the floor away from you. Let the ribs rise up as you drop the head and relook at the feet. Take this opportunity, you can even shake the um, calves, notice if they're like asleep, if they're flabby. Try to find tone in the back of the leg. Can you find the fascial connection here? If you can, we wanna keep that as we lengthen the top of the head forward. Don't let the ribs collapse downwards. Fingertips press down as the elbows pull wide, little pulses falling back. Ideally, as you move, you wanna feel this like, the fascia crosses within the belly and it makes this x shape and you can almost feel it like moving up and in and supporting the ribs the hips everything um so as we move forward and back notice that the tailbone doesn't change much i mean it might change a tiny bit but it's not gonna rock all the way down and point towards the floor and then come up towards the ceiling we want to keep the hips lifted same with the ribs. Keep the ribs rising up towards the sky. Lengthen the ribs upward. Yeah. So as we're moving, pull the hands energetically towards the knees. Lift up from underneath the armpits. Broaden the elbows. Can you find, almost if you can imagine the shape of the spine, if you can find more space between each and every vertebrae, your practice will just like, Oh, it's so cool. It's like finding that space in the low back is just um, this freeing experience. And then when we come to stand, when you move throughout your day, you don't have to be collapsed, compressed downward. 
All right, we're gonna move into, let's try humble cat. The right foot comes to the mat, the left foot comes off to the side, both knees forward. Take a look at the knee and the foot. The back left foot is a, a hero. The ankle is lifted up off the floor, both knees push forward and then wide. As you press the knees wide, the belly lifts. It's going forward towards the floor, but there's this internal lift and there's this internal movement of forward and up. Push the floor away from you. Make sure the left elbow is pointed to the left. The pointy, bony part of the elbow is pointing to the left, not towards the knee. So if you hyperextend a lot, rotate. Eye of the elbow inward. Exhale, sit back, bring your right fingernails to your mat. Allow the ear to fall towards the shoulder as you push the floor away from you. Imagine resistant bands around the elbows. Push wide into that. As you pulse forward and back, belly stays open and long. Throat stays open and long. Now bring the hand to the knee. Press them into each other. So this is a really strong push. If you um, watch for a moment, if I were to just slip my hand, my hand would go so far back, my knee would come so far forward. So there's a lot of force here. With this connection, I'm able to lengthen the belly. So if I just kind of casually make the shape, there's no tone, there's no length in the belly or the low back. Instead, press them into each other and find that fascial connection. Then the outer leg can lift up with ease. Little pulses forward and back, lengthen. Again, if you feel any sensation in the low back, it's your warning sign, it's your cue. Something needs to um, awaken so that the low back doesn't overcompensate. It doesn't overdo, overstress. Bring the right hand to the right side of the head. Elbow is near the nose, bicycle the right leg. Can you keep the belly and the low back long as you move? If for some reason you are really close to a wall and you have one, I love to push the, the right foot into the wall here. You can imagine pushing the foot forward, dig and drag the foot into the wall, lengthen the belly. Find more space, exhale, right side comes down. Let's try the left side. Swivel right foot off of your mat. Ankle is lifted, left toes to your mat. Sit the hips back. Look to your feet for a moment. Find that they're engaged. Big toe presses down on the left foot. Knees now can push forward and wide. As you do that, the left hip moves up to the left. Right hip moves up to the right. It's like this, um, as the hips move away, the low back can scoop up and in. The belly bows forward and lifts up towards the ribs. Now take a look at your right elbow, rotate it to the right, push the floor away. Imagine taking the right shoulder blade and pulling it more to the right. The left shoulder blade and pull it more to the left. At the same time, push into the left foot, keep the hips rooting back, find your pulse forward and back. Bring the left hand to the left knee, press them into each other, get the belly long. Open here, option to pick up the left leg, right ear more towards the right shoulder. Don't let the right ribs collapse down. Once they collapse down, there's unnecessary pressure in the low back. So keep the ribs really big, really expansive. Left hand can now come to the left side of the head, press the head back, bicycle very small with the left leg. It's a very small rotation with the left leg. And as you move, dig, drag the foot. So it's not like just moving skeletally in space, like uh, lazily, I guess. You can really find your power, that fascial connection within the leg. Yeah. So strong, I think. <laughs> it should feel so strong. That's what we're going for. Yeah, left hand comes down, touch it light. Left foot will come off of your mat. Right foot comes off of your mat. All right, so you're kind of in this like long, wide-legged crouching cat pose. Press the big toes down. You can even look at the toes, push them down. Make sure the toenail isn't moving upward. If you can, squeeze the outer and inner ball of the foot towards each other, lifting up the arches of the feet, heels squeeze in. Imagine pressing the feet back 
towards the back of your mat, lift the hips upward. Now, if your ribs are collapsed, you might feel that immediately in the low back. Push the floor away from you, lift the ribs up towards the sky. Find a small, small pulse here. Keeping the power of the glutes as we walk the fingertips back towards the feet. And then one hand comes to a knee at a time, making your way up to your knees. Drop the head for a moment, expand the armpits up towards the ears, rounding into the upper back just a little bit. Keeping that, let the belly fall down towards your mat. Squeeze the heels in once more, press the knees wide, and almost lift up the fascia all the way from the floor, up through the belly. It's like you can, eventually you can feel this like connective tissue, this elastic suit of armor almost, wrapping around the entire core. And when we think about strengthening the core, we're so used to isolating and thinking like, okay, we'll strengthen our obliques. We'll, strength, we'll strengthen our back another day, you know? But they're very connected. Um, and if we could find this like wetsuit type stretch um, tone within the body, it's so powerful. All right, with that, bring your hands into pull-up bar. Elbows wrap forward so they're in front of you. They're in line with the shoulders. They're not out to the sides, but then we're pushing wide. So I just demoed that to kind of give you the idea of the force is moving outward, but they're restrained. The skeleton is kind of restrained inward, if that makes sense. Find this wide-legged pulse. Hips move back. Elbows are forward. Ribs are fully supported. The bend is in the knees and the hips. It's not in the back. If you take a look at my belly, my torso, it's not changing much. It's pretty um, similar on the way up, on the way down. Step one foot at a time to your mat. Press the big toe down, squeeze the heels in towards each other. Bring the right hand to the right thigh. Left hand to the left side of the head, sit back, and then rise straight up through center. With this right hand, Keep the belly away from the thighs. With the left elbow, pull forward. See if you can expand the ribs back as the belly moves forward. The hips move back. Exhale, sit back. Bring this horseshoe type hand to the upper thigh. Arc up and over to the right. Now, when we think about this, Oftentimes, the instinct is to dump down and arc a lot. So this is kind of like, I don't know, this is a default in most humans, I find. <laughs> so instead, think about finding your way back to center. That's going to cause a lot of compression in the right low back, in the right side body. So instead, I like to think about the hips rooting back, heels squeezing in. Don't lose the hips here, the connection all the way up through the belly. Try to keep that as we lift the left elbow a little higher. Right hand is going to prevent the ribs from falling down. Head presses back into the hand. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer. Good to see you. All right. Finding a little bit of movement here within the legs. Look more to the right. But again, not so much that we collapse down. As soon as we collapse, you could, if you find that you're collapsing down, bring your left hand to your right ribs and lift up. The right hand pushes down as the left hand lifts up. We want to find movement within the spine without compression. Let's try the other side. Bringing the hand to the thigh at first, we're going to sit back and rise straight up. Sit back behind the heels and rise straight up as you inhale. Couple more like that. And then instead of thinking arcing over and compressing the left side, think about rising the elbow up a little bit higher on the right side, opening the right ribs, but not at the cost of closing the left side down. Keeping that space, that length, push strongly into the left upper thigh. It might even move up to the left hip crease. You're moving up so high. It's barely an arc over, but just enough. You feel it pretty strongly internally. 
Begin to shift your gaze a little bit more to the left. Exhale, sit back and allow the arms to go to the right, ribs to the left, and switch directions, arcing right and left. Use your breath. Hey, Jenna, good to see you. All right. <laughs> Let's bring the hands back to the knees. Drop the head, look at the feet. So if the feet are disconnected, most of the time, the entire leg, the entire hip is disconnected. Um, everything in the body works together or it is, it's asleep together, right? So um, I've had a lot of foot injuries throughout my life and a lot of knee injuries, a lot of ankle issues and as a result, I was not able to strengthen my glutes at all. I had a low back um, issue when I was a dancer that was pretty extreme, and my posture was just all backwards. So I locked my legs, and my weight was in my heels, my hips were forward, I was nursing, I had babies, and my posture was at its worst. Like this was literally my posture, and my head was very far forward because I was always looking down at kids. So, um, this is where I came from. I know it's like, it seems like an exaggeration, but this is not at all. This was my life um, up until recently. So with this posture, I was experiencing a lot of pain. My low back was flat, but also I was just disconnected. When I would fold to grab something, I was rounding from my mid back. So this practice is huge. It will help you find bends in the knees and in the hips. Therefore, the back can get away from this pain. So I want to talk about how this, because um, you can come to my life classes um, on daily ritual anytime, but I want to talk about how that translates to like everyday life, right? So as we were pulsing here, you would want to take that into, we were pulsing here actually, um, with the elbows forward. If you needed to grab something off the floor, I would recommend stepping the feet wide and then bending from the knees, from the hips, keeping the ribs lifting, right? So that we have this instead of this. Um, so let's go ahead and practice a couple of those. I know it might seem like we're doing a lot, but that is why we're kind of getting that healthier pattern within the body. Stepping the feet wider than your mat, press the big toe down, bring the hands to the knees and relook at the toes. Ideally, I'm still working on this, the toe is, the toenail is flat. It's not moving in this upward direction like mine naturally do. So it's flat. The knuckle of the big toe is lifted and the metatarsal, the big bone right behind the big toe is pressing down. Therefore, the arches rise up, the heels squeeze in, the knees can press forward. As the knees press forward, the hands resist and then you find this like elastic armor suit again in the belly and in the low back. Your low back is now supported. It's not expected to do everything all by itself. Knees press wide to get the glutes to rise, bend from the knees. You don't have to go all the way down, just bend a little bit and imagine you're picking something up. Now, if there was anything in the low back there, expand the ribs, take your hands to your ribs. Either laugh really hard or take a deep giant breath in and then keep it as you exhale. Get the ribs as big as you can. Draw the elbows forward so that you're not collapsing the back ribs. Drawing the elbows forward, release the hands forward, lift up from underneath the armpits. Elbows press wide as the hands push away from you. Bend the knees, hips slide back, and then find a little bit of a movement. And you don't have to go this far. It can just be a little bit. See if you can find a spot where the low back doesn't take over. And it might be that you're way up here. If your low back is um, inflamed, as many are this week, keep your way up here and then just train to bend the knees and the hips, keep the torso the same. If you find that that's fine, you can slide your hands down a little bit or you can hover, which I find to be the hardest, but it's easily done with practice. <laughs> all right, fingertips are gonna eventually touch all the way down. Ribs rise up, walk the hands forward, stretch the head forward, push the floor away, and then bring your feet back to your mat. In slow motion, let's bring the knees all the way down. 
untuck the toes, look to the feet, draw the top of the foot forward, lifting up the ankles. Heels squeeze in, and then the knees press wide. We want the legs engaged. If they're asleep, again, the glutes will probably be asleep and the low back will do too much, if that makes sense. All right, lift the ribs upward. Elbows push wide. You can almost take one hand and feel is there a hollow, a lift underneath the armpit? Are the lats engaged? Are they strong? Top of the head pulls forward and some more pulses here. Hands pull back towards the knees, lengthen. Belly is moving forward. Option to stay here. Um, if your back is just inflamed, stay. If you want more ice pick, the right hand, pinky edge of the hand pushes down, left hand meets. So both hands are towards the center of your mat. Elbows press wide, top of the head pulls forward, and then tone, hands pull towards the knees. Can you find this all the way down into the low belly? We're creating tone in the belly, but we're also keeping it long, keeping the low back moving in, and finding this length, this lift. Before you get too tired, bend the elbows and bring the elbows down without letting the wrist come down. So the wrist stays lifted, drop the head, lift the ribs up towards the sky. Move the ribs right and left. Keep the ribs just as big, the right shoulder blade where it is, the left shoulder blade where it is, draw the back of the head up, top of the head towards the uh, front of your mat. And then slide the hips back, elbows and knees pull towards each other to find a small pulse here. Can you find this toning the entire belly, the entire lower back without pain? Elbows and knees press wide to keep the ribs and hips wide. Belly tapers in. Exhale, slide your way back to your hands, tuck your toes and twist your knees to the right, setting the left hip down. Right hand comes to the floor, left hand extends to the right corner of the mat, lying down with the head leading the way, coming to your left side. Right elbow comes down to your mat, so instead of the hand, take the right elbow all the way down. Push the elbow down into the mat. Pull the elbow towards the knees, knees towards the elbows, and notice how much space you can get in the low belly and in the low back. Can you pull the elbows and the knees towards each other even stronger? Right hand now comes to the right side of the head, leave the elbow low. Head presses back into the hand, the left side pushes down. Option to stay here, or lift the right leg up a little bit. Find a bicycle on this right side. Head presses back, heart presses back, and the hips press back. With those three things pushing back, you will find the ability to bring the belly, the low back, and the neck forward. Once they move forward, you'll get out of any stiffness, out of any pain. The low back can almost calm down. It's really cool sensation. Left head, uh, bring the head back to the left arm and then roll to your back. Arms come up towards the sky. Maneuver your way onto your mat with the back of the body. Let's try the other side. Right arm extends long. Roll to your right side, lying on your right arm. Take your hips and slide them really far back behind you. Left elbow, instead of up towards the sky, bring the left elbow all the way down to your mat. Knees and elbow pull towards each other as the left elbow pushes down. It also pulls towards the knees. It pushes down to expand into the back of the ribs it pulls towards the knees to lengthen the belly and the low back. Give yourself more space there. Keep that space. Don't let anything change in the upper back. Left hand comes to the left side of the head. 
elbow is near the nose. You can float the head if you'd like. Press the right side of the body down. Option to lift the left leg and find a small pulsing bicycle here. More important than the bicycle right now is to keep your attention on the low back. Keep the length in the belly. Can the hips move back and wide? Can the ribs expand wider to lengthen and narrow the waist? Exhale, left side comes down. Press into your left hand. Leave your head heavy as you make your way back up. Making your way back to your knees. Cool. Those are just some little ideas I have for you today. Um, when you go throughout your day, hey B, good to see you. Um, when you go, lighting is funny in this space. Um, when you go throughout the rest of your day, try to think about how you move your low back how you move your belly. Um, when you're moving, you can even like take your hand to your belly. If you need to fold forward, keep your hand there and don't let the belly change. We don't want this to happen. So the flesh will stay the same when you fold, right? Therefore, we're hinging from the hips, from the upper back, or the upper back is supported. I'm not, we're not hinging from there. I don't know why I said that. From the knees and the hips hinge and the upper back is lifted, is expanded. The belly doesn't change from here to here, right? So we're not bending this with this like softness and this flatness in the upper back. Instead, we're keeping the length. That will save your low back every time you have to bend forward and even little bends, like if you're reaching to get something out of a drawer, even if it's not the low drawer, the middle drawer. If you're, um, you know, reaching to get things out of the dishwasher or whatever you do. Think about keeping length in the belly because that is huge. Cool. Um, let me know. You can post below questions, concerns, um, anything you're feeling. Um, next week I'm doing three classes in a row on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 12 p.m. They're all live classes and you have to sign up for them. The um, link, I can post it below this after it's done. It's not there yet, but um, I can post it below. Um, and it's at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And I will be diving into like more things, uh, more tips and tricks and ideas for moving with more stabilization, more strength, more support, and getting away from pain and discomfort and things that might be holding you back. So cool. Uh, thanks, Alice. Good to see you guys. Love you. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, enjoy it. It's beautiful out there. All right. Hopefully it's beautiful. If you're dealing with the fires, I hope you have clean air. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.